Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar, a video compression shootout between Apple Compressor, Telestream episode, and Sorensen Squeeze. There's all kinds of reasons to use any of this software. It's all good, and I want to show you how you can put it to work in your shop to compress your videos for the web, for DVD, or anything else. Let's get ourselves started. By the way, our membership is a great value. If you're looking to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library is a great value. There's more than 400 movies, dozens of hours of training, all in-depth and up-to-date, all for an incredibly low monthly price of $19.99. Plus, members can attend any Power Up webinar for free. Our training covers Apple, Adobe, and Autodesk software, and we update it every week. For more information, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. What I want to do today is to compare the features and operation of Apple Compressor 4, Telestream Episode 6.3, and Sorensen Squeeze 8.5. My goal is not to pick a winner. We don't have enough time for that, but to show the strengths and weaknesses of each application. I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about compression, but here's a few quick notes. File size is totally dependent upon the compression bitrate. Lower bitrates create smaller files, but lower bitrates also yield lower image quality. Image quality, though, is a much more complex relationship. Larger frame sizes require higher bitrates. More frames per second also require higher bitrates. And more movement between frames requires higher bitrates. In general, the goal is to create the smallest possible file size while retaining the highest possible quality. All three of these programs run on Macintosh systems. They all provide a wide range of QuickTime compression presets. All of them can compress multiple formats from a single file. All allow customizing compression presets. All allow customizing destinations for compressed files, including both local and remote locations. All allow some form of preview prior to compression. And all allow some form of compression automation, whether it's droplets with compressor or watch folders with episode and squeeze. The strengths in Apple Compressor 4 is that it's inexpensive. It's $49.99. It's tightly integrated with Final Cut Pro 10. It has extensive QuickTime compression presets, extensive video and audio filters. Droplets provide automation without compressor running at the same time. And the share monitor provides a file status display. But the weaknesses of Compressor 4 is that it doesn't natively support Flash, Windows, or WebM formats. Compression clusters are unreliable and slow. It only supports one delivery destination per file. And Preview does not show the effects of compression prior to compressing the file. Episode strengths are that it runs on Macintosh and Windows. Its presets include Flash, Windows, and WebM. It has more extensive controls when creating a compression preset. It's optimized for work groups and clusters running on either Macs or PCs. It has a simplified three-step graphical interface, drag and drop to create watch folders and destinations, and the latest version integrates with Autodesk Smoke and Flame. The weaknesses of Telestream episode is that it's more expensive. It starts at $4.95 with the Pro version at $9.95. The base version, that's the $4.95 version, only compresses one file at a time. The Pro version simultaneously encodes two files, while Episode Engine supports an unlimited number of concurrent encodes. Episode needs to be running for watch folders to work. Network compression costs extra and requires a Windows server. And X.264 support is also an extra cost option. Sorensen squeeze strength so that it runs on Mac and Windows. And it views itself as the hub of a compression process. It has a wide range of additional free compression presets, which are available on the web. It includes an integrated review and approval system for your clients. It also includes video distribution via Sorensen 360. Its presets include Flash, Windows, WebM, and adaptive bit rates. It provides really fast H.264 or MPEG-4 compression when you're using a GPU. And it supports multiple encoding jobs per CPU core.
But the weaknesses are also that it's more expensive, 649 and 899. Graphics processor unit acceleration only works on Windows and Mac Pros because it requires an NVIDIA GPU card. Customizing compression settings can be complex, and Squeeze needs to be running for watch folders to work. Network compression has an extra cost and requires Windows. This is the compressor interface. If you haven't looked at it, this is where we load files. This is called the task window. This is the preview window. The history window, which shows you what you've been doing and allows you to monitor the status of projects. The inspector window, which is where we make changes, and our settings and destination folder. Let's take a look at the next option, and this is Telestream Episode. Telestream Episode has essentially a three-panel look. This is a list of your files called the Media Browser. We can hide it by clicking here, showing the Media Browser. This is the environment where you build your settings. The workflow window is down here, and all your different settings are up above. And this is the inspector. This is where we're able to make changes to stuff. Sorensen Squeeze has a slightly different philosophy. Uh, equally uh, robust presets and equally deep in terms of the settings that we can use. Different interface. What we've got here is we have a simple process of creating video. First is, let's import a file. So I'm going to go to the desktop. I'm going to pull in Twin Waterfalls and click Open. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar, the video compression shootout between Apple Compressor, Telestream Episode, and Sorensen Squeeze. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.biz store and look for Webinar 83.